Hi, this is Amy Lewis with Solid Fire, and we're back with Pop-Up Tech Talks. I'm here with Steven. Steven, can you introduce yourself? Sure. Thanks, Amy. Uh, Steven Foskett. I'm the organizer of the Tech Field Day event series, and I love storage. See, and knowing this about you, I wanted to ask you, with all the changes and evolution in the market, what are you most excited about right now in the storage world? Well, it's uh, pretty cool. Uh, one of the things that I get to exposed, uh, get exposed to as part of the Storage Field Day series, especially, is uh, the the waves and waves of innovation. So every year we do, uh, you know, a couple of Storage Field Day events, and every year there's a few startups at each event, um, and it's it's they they come in waves. And right now, what I'm seeing is a couple of things. Um, number one, uh, everybody's excited about Docker. Uh, the biggest question remaining now that Docker seems to have the networking story pretty much in hand is how to do storage for Docker. And so I am very, very interested in seeing what the ultimate answer to that question is going to be because there are a lot of different approaches on how properly to you know, allocate and provision and manage storage uh, for Docker, but um, I haven't seen yet the, 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 the answer. The you know sorry the answer yeah <laughs> and uh, and I know that a lot of companies are uh, approaching that uh, I'm seeing a lot of creativity there and so that's one area that I'm really excited about um, the other thing uh, that I'm seeing a lot of companies working on a lot of new startups working on is how to integrate uh, non volatile memory um, into storage essentially uh, you know with in Intel's 3D Crosspoint and um, with uh, Diablo's Memory One. And with other companies, uh, you know, Toshiba has the 3D NAND. Um, we're starting to see a lot more um, uh, pulling NAND flash toward the server, into the server. And the question is, what kind of uh, storage system would use that? How would a storage system use it? How would it integrate it? How do you build a server SAN, or how do you build a tiered storage infrastructure? And um, there are a lot of companies that are working on that question as well. And I'm really excited to see what they're doing, because there's a lot of creativity uh, right there right now. So another question, you do these Tech Field Day events all over the world. Um, what kind of differences are you seeing? We're at Cisco Live Europe now. What kind of differences are you seeing globally in terms of are people all in the same place in the storage continuum, or are you seeing some drastic differences? Yeah, that's a that's a really good question, and I think it kind of goes to the nature of storage. Um, it's it's natural for us in the industry to get out ahead of the market, and it seems like uh, many times we get out way ahead of the market. and. Um, I'm not seeing a, a lot of variation um, globally. I, I think that it's safe to say that um, you know France, especially, and Germany are more conservative in adopting new technologies. But storage is already such a conservative market. Uh, I don't see a real big difference in uptake to proven technologies from the United States or Australia, for example, to um, you know France or England or Germany. What I do see is definitely um, a reluctance to adopt unproven storage technologies, uh, you know, to, to really rely on them. Uh, and I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. And for that reason, I think it's important for all these solutions that we see, you know, whether it's the wave of, you know, NVM integration or whatever, uh, I think it's important that those things integrate nicely and uh, with proven, you know, uh, proven storage approaches at least, if not proven storage products, because otherwise just nobody's going to adopt them anywhere. Interesting. I appreciate that feedback. So uh, what, do you, what do you think about Berlin? It's uh, my first time here. Any tips for uh, our viewers? Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> ich bin ein Berliner. Now, how many people have said that? Seriously. <laughs> yeah. I, I, it's my first time in Berlin, not my first time in Germany, um, but uh, I've really enjoyed uh, enjoyed being here. Uh, our hotel is right on the Kurfürstendamm, which is kind of the Rodeo Drive of, of Berlin, which is pretty cool. Um, if, if you come to Berlin, you've got to order a Berliner Weisse, and they come in two kinds. There's Hirnbier, and then there's also... Um, uh, sort of a, an herbed one, and you got to try them both. We decided they taste just like Jolly Ranchers. It's beer with a with a bendy straw, and 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 it's way better than it sounds. Seriously, Berlin has the most amazing beer cocktails. <laughs> well, there is something our viewers may not have ever tried, and I look forward to hearing the feedback. Yes. So, thank you, Stephen. Excellent. Thank you very much for having me on. It's always cool to see you. And um, hello, everybody. <laughs> Check out Tech Field Day. <laughs> 
Thanks for watching Pop-Up Tech Talks. We'll see you next time.